What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you some super simple techniques for building lure bodies, mostly in the kind of worm, uh, crawl, creature vein. We are going to die! I normally use the loft technique, which I outline in the video that I'll link in the description. It's great if you're making, uh, you know, fish style bodies. But if you're making worms or anything round or oval in shape, these techniques will be much easier for you to learn without all that complication of uh, using the loft. Well, let's jump into Fusion 360. All right, guys, so um, what I like to do uh, to start out is just draw a simple line, and that helps me maintain uh, the length of my bait. And I'm just going to use um, five inches here. My actual project in Fusion is set up in millimeters because I'm going to 3D print this. But a cool trick in Fusion is no matter what the project is in, if you type in the unit in your um, length or parameters, whatever parameters you have, it'll automatically convert that for you. So I type in five inches here, I hit enter, and it translates that to 127 millimeters. Pretty sweet. Now, of course, you can make this any length you want. I just chose five inches because, you know, five inch worm. So let's do one of my favorite super simple ones here. And this kind of makes a worm body that is comprised of spheres. So it gives it kind of that ripple wavy technique. And so we just create a sphere and we want to create it on this front plane here. Let me switch to front, click on the center line, and then however you want to big, you want to make it, um, you know, probably want to make it nine millimeters, let's say. All right. And then we just simply create a pattern and create a rectangular pattern. We want to make sure we select bodies. My object is my sphere, and my direction is going to be this line. And now, switch to the top view. I can just drag this out. So you can just kind of line it up right here on the end, and then just come over here and start increasing the quantity until they kind of come together. Now, how far they come together? Let's try 15. So if I do 15, you see how they're barely touching? that's probably not going to be enough overlap to provide a strong bond or connection when you go to shoot this thing out of plastic. So if we pump it up, you can see this gray area here, right? That's my overlap. So you want that to be fairly, fairly strong, right? And so look, just keep pumping it up until you think it looks good. Bottom line, this is gonna take some practice. And just click OK, and then boom, we have a five inch segmented worm. See, I have all my bodies are separate as well. We just want to combine these. Makes things easier later on. Make sure they're joined, but okay. So one thing you can do to this body that makes it a little bit cooler, I think, is you can come into these individual segments here and we're going to click on these lines. This is too for them. And we can add a fillet to these and just kind of drag it and you'll see that kind of smooths out this section. And that's even cooler. Now you're, you're adding a lot of bulk there, so it's not going to be as um, you know flexible as these other sections, but it's, a, it's another cool look. And so you can actually come back here and edit my rectangular pattern and maybe remove a couple. Yep. So if you remove a couple, right, you have a, a smaller connection here, but you can actually use that fillet to bulk it up. And so that's another way you can go about um, kind of beefing up that middle section. Again, it's kind of up to you how you want to do it, but this is a really cool and easy technique. Okay, so we're going to use the same concept, but I want to make kind of a more jointed lure, I guess. So if we go back here, all the way back, and like, let's edit this rectangular pattern. And instead of 16, let's do like 10, right? And I'm like, bro, those aren't even connected. Wait, be patient. Now what we can do is we can come to the front, and draw a circle and let's make this like six all right again you're gonna figure out which, what's gonna work for you here then we're gonna hit the extrude key and we're gonna bring that through all of these guys and we'll just say join so we'll join everything together in one shot and boom now you got a segmented worm and again i can put fillets on any of these i can make this thing instead of six millimeters i can make it smaller you know more thin this totally depends on you know what kind of plastic you're using how much you want it to wiggle how strong you want it to be there's always a trade-off between flexibility and strength All right so if i come in here and i make this um three millimeters right that's probably not going to hold up to many bass but it's going to be all kinds of wiggly 
All right, so now we're gonna move on to how to make kind of a creature style bait. And this is a little more complicated, but not really too bad. Well, let's go. All right, so we're gonna start with a top down view, create a sketch, and I'm gonna create a fit point spline. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I need to make a center line. And let's make like a little three inch creature body. And now I'm gonna do a fit point spline. I'm gonna come here and here. Now this is a trick that a lot of people mess up on splines. They add like a bunch of points. You most of the time only really need two. And I'll show you. Click here, click the check box. Now I have these handles. I have the escape key. I grab this handle and bend it out. And I can grab this handle up here and bend it out. So now I can make this however wide I want it. Now, keep in mind that however wide this is at its widest point, your lure is gonna be double that width because we got a whole nother side to it. Okay, so you don't wanna get too crazy here. Each of these squares is about five millimeters. And so in this setup, you know, this is probably close to six, seven millimeters right here. You give me a 14 millimeter wide body. It's probably pretty good. And keep that number in the back of your head. You'll need it. All right, so now I have one half of the kind of profile outline of our creature bait looking from the top down. Let's add some stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is actually create kind of an oval shape. So I'm gonna create a sketch on this front plane again, and we're gonna create an ellipse, and we're gonna start at the center, and we're gonna go, let's say, what I talked about 7.5-ish roughly. We want some overlap there at the widest point. Let's just say eight millimeters wide. I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna go up, and maybe six millimeters tall. That seems reasonable. Click finish sketch. So one thing you'll see on a lot of creature baits is they have these kind of ribs, uh, but they're usually backwards. So like the front of the bait is taller and it kind of tapers down. So we're gonna use the extrude command to make that happen. So we hit extrude, we hit this oval. And now this is how big your segments are gonna be, this length here. So let's just make Again, I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. Five millimeter segments and my taper. I want it to taper down, so I need a negative number here. So we can do negative three. No, probably not enough, negative six. Let's see, let's probably make this, yeah, nine looks like a better option. Okay, that's a good taper. Click on, make sure it's new body, it should be, click on okay. Now we're gonna add some fillets to this. Hit the fillets, see what one looks like. It's probably too much. 0.6. All right, let me come over here and say add. We're gonna add this back section and 0.5 maybe. Yeah, that looks good. Hit enter and we're done. So now we have our body here and we have our line. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a pattern on path. Now we're gonna want to select bodies over here. Select this body. My path is here. Boom. And then we can just drag this out Get close to the end, boop, okay. And then again, we're just gonna play with the numbers we have. And you probably want these to overlap pretty well. All right, 18, that's probably good. And one thing you can look at here is this identical or path direction. With identical, it's see how it stays straight uh, from the start. If you do path direction, you'll introduce this curve into it, which is probably what you want, but you know, you do you, bro. And we're gonna click, okay. All right, so now we got all these bodies. We actually don't need this front body anymore, so let's turn it off. And we got a cool little curve there. Now this technique is the same technique I use if I wanna add legs, you know, appendages coming out of things. Same technique, draw a line, use pattern on path. It's really cool. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and join all these bad boys together. Hit the combine command. I'm going to select target body, just select one of them, doesn't really matter. Then you're going to shift click the rest of these. Make sure it's on combine. We don't want to keep tools and click OK. All right, so now we have, let's call this the curl body. All right, now we want to create a mirror. No bodies. These are already selected. If it's not, you can just come over here. Ooh, crawl Bobby. That's an interesting choice. My mirror plane is going to be this center plane here. All right. It'll give me a preview. All right. So that looks pretty interesting. See, they have this big gap in the middle. We'll take care of that in a second. 
and um, join is fine for this operation. Okay, so there we go. Now we want to come back here, find our first sketch, oh, find our second sketch, excuse me, which is this oval. Make sure that's on. I'm gonna hit extrude, take this bad boy and come right down the middle. And instead of cut, we're gonna join it up and click okay. And boom, you got a pretty cool looking crawl body. Again, it's up to you how you wanna do it. You can make this middle section smaller, just draw another oval in there. Um, you can make these parts bigger to try to get them to join together in the middle. You can do all kinds of things, bro. So one thing to do if you want to um, try to make these things join, if you come back to our original sketch, which has this curve in here, I right click, click on edit, and just bring these guys closer together. Click finish. And now you can see I have less of a middle section there. You can just keep tweaking that if you want to. You know, I find that, um, actually let's go back to this extrude and take that out. See how I'm much closer together here. I just uh, pull the timeline back. And I just keep editing this sketch and keep changing this to be smaller and smaller. There's probably some math you could do here to figure out the optimal width and the curve and all that kind of stuff. But I'm a hacker, bro. That's what I do. Ooh, now my mirror broke. Okay, so this happens sometimes as compute failed. What I usually find here is if you um, get this in, an, in a mirror, if you come in here and instead of joining you to say new body, click OK, it'll make the new body for you. And then you can come over here and combine them. I don't know why it does that. Okay, so sometimes Fusion doesn't like combining things. Um, they're like that and you really don't have to combine them if you're gonna go make a mold Just when you go cut it out. Just make sure you select these two bodies. So don't get all hung up if this happens It's um, not really an issue. It's more of like my little OCD that they all have to be combined, but they really don't Okay, this last one I'm gonna show you is very similar to the last one we just did I just wanted to include it to give you a little more inspiration if you will on how to add uh, parts and pieces to something like a craw to shrimp kind of lure. So I'm going to use the same parts, this little segments and my drawing here uh, that I used in the first one. But we're going to go add our legs. So the way I like to add these little legs is I'm going to create a sketch again on the top plane. I'm going to use this fit point spline. I'm going to come all the way to the middle here. And this really just ensures that I have a good solid connection for this piece. And I'm going to draw it out, you know, again, length, you're going to have to figure that out, bro, how long you want it. And I'm going to grab this handle and I'm going to curve it. Okay. So there's two ways we can go here. If you want a very, very simple cylinder coming out on this, I can use the pipe command, click here, choose some dimensions like two millimeters. And I want to do, I'm just going to do a new body here, but you can do a join. That's fine. Right. Just like that. Boom. You have a very simple, simple appendage. But I want to do something a little different, so I'm going to click on the Create Form, and I'm going to create a pipe in here. I'm going to click my leg. It defaults to 20 millimeter square, which is just crazy. Let's do like 1.8, and we want to click this little smooth display. My end types to be square. Okay. So I'll link in the description below a video by Yonk Outdoors that kind of goes over more of the forms interface, and I'll, I'll link to a bunch of videos. I actually make a playlist for you. That's how much I love you on all kind of the form stuff. But the basic concept is all of these little faces, all of these little points, I can move. So I'm just gonna say modify edit form. And now when I click on any of these things, I can move them around in 3D space, right? So I can kind of pop these out. You can add some symmetry if you want. In this case, I'm not, because I want this to be a little funky. And if I wanna kind of neck down any of this stuff, I can just double click on these and I can grab this handle. You know, the forms interface is kind of funky, so the best advice I have for you is get in here, make a basic shape, and just start pulling it around and see where it goes. Okay. And one other thing I'll show you here is if you click on a face, click on modify, subdivide, you can get more faces and points. Click on okay, now if I click on this point, click the modify button again, and just pull this out, I can get kind of more of a claw kind of shape. Okay, once you got something you like, Click finish form, okay, and now we got this guy. And now we can do our same thing. We can create a pattern on a path. We want bodies, so like this body and this body. My path is here. 
and it's the same process, right? Just figure out how many you need for whatever you're doing. What did we do, 15 last time, was that good? Okay, and you can see now I have like my legs running into each other. You would go back and adjust that accordingly. Let's do 16, get a good overlap. I'm just gonna click on okay. Okay, so this is where the form, using the form tool instead of a pipe kind of bites you in the butt because I can't go back and edit that line and get it to impact the form I just did. So I need to go back into the form and then I have to basically kind of grab all of this up here, click modify, I'll make sure I have this and just kind of drag it and this thing will change the angle, right? So it gets a little messier when you use the form interface. It looks cooler, but it's messier. All right, there we go. You may like that, you may not. Again, do what you do. And again, we'll do the same thing here. We'll just create a mirror. And there we go, another creature body with all kinds of legs. Now, if you don't want your legs that dense, what you can do is you can come back and here, once you have this done, you can actually do an intermediary thing here. You can do a pattern on path, click this body, select this path and just do like two here, keep them identical. And we're gonna start here just like this and make sure that we have some overlap. That's probably a good overlap. Click okay, then we come back here, we did our form and we combine them and then we create a new pattern on path here. And we just make sure that we have enough. Nine looks good, all right. So you got this kind of funky overlap thing going on, but when we mirror it, it looks pretty cool. So again, if you want even more space, you would add more plain bodies before you add your legs, that kind of stuff, but you get the general idea, I hope. So even though this technique is simple, you can get some really cool lower bodies out of there by making your bodies kind of funky with legs or kind of cool segments and then pattering them together to join them. Hope you found this useful, guys. Take care of tight lines. Bruh.